Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK and this is Fluid Ninja Live use case package number 10 Fire and Smoke I'm quickly rushing through the level to see what we have like an interactive fireplace where you could bash these huge logs and some oily smoke you could adjust uh, the lightning and camera distance we have candles and of course this guy with a torch some light smoke and finally rushing through this section character effects so quickly that's what we have and now oh, I'm getting to the details first uh, let's have a look at stage one I'm switching off the pound possession So here we go. Um, stage 1 explains what detail maps could mean to the simulation. On the left you could see uh, this fire thing without detail maps and on the right with detail maps and we have a reference to level 29 where the whole thing is explained in details. But the point is uh, detail maps are like a texture, an extra layer that you add to the simulation as a flow map and it greatly helps to increase realism by adding details. Now, uh, as you might have realized, Ninja is a two-dimensional simulation and oftentimes we are using camera-facing planes to, uh, to put things in 3D. Um, now, um, in case we are using more than one simulation and we populate the area with these uh, multiple simulations uh, we could have a, a fireplace that could be looked at from multiple angles and it is looking good from all angles also by increasing the number of simulations we could we could have like extra details and the whole thing is looking smooth and uh, <clears throat> on stage three we have a very simple setup it's just one single camera facing plane it is optimal from the mid distance and the far distance again you could view it from multiple angles but it doesn't really behave good once you are starting to uh, get to a top down position so the previous setup shown here was optimized for all angles while this one here is mainly from the side view and from a distance but it's very cheap GPU wise uh, just to have an idea how it looks like I'm switching the material to a big red opaque plane so we could see how cruel it looks like yep <laughs> no no detail maps no nothing just a camera facing plane it's ugly but that is why we are employing output materials which you could define at the live generic so uh, <laughs> yeah so that is the stage uh, stage uh, four where each of these components is coming with their own ninja live simulation embedded if you click one of these guys uh, you could see that these are blueprints and on the details panels you could see that the ninja life component is added to these blueprints and if you check the mesh you could see that the simulate physics is on and so since uh, the ninja life trace mesh is attached to the mesh that is moving with physics and since ninja life trace mesh is camera facing well uh, let me just switch back to the phone the result is that uh, the simulation goes with the physics body and so I could push things around and still uh, the fire remains in sync with these bodies ah uh, yeah so uh, in this way we could have interaction with the fireplace yes in this case we are using a two-dimensional ray marcher which is using this yellow object as a light source. 
just to calculate where the rays are coming from. So if you select the container, uh, you could see that this uh, bonfire heavy smoke material is applied to the container. And in this material, you could go to the ray march, you could see that it is enabled also in the container details. We have this section ray marching and this is where we have uh, providing this yellow object as the light source. So in the end uh, we have this two-dimensional uh, ray marcher which is again mapped on a camera facing plane. Of course we could have some interaction. Uh, this one is a three-dimensional volumetric ray marcher. Oh, let me go full screen and zoom out a little bit and get down with this uh, main light. Mm -hmm. So uh, the point is that we have a similar setup, a camera facing plane and the heavy smoke simulation is running on this plane but this time <laughs> oh my knees are on fire uh, this time uh, we are hiding yeah, let me just select the heavy smoke container and going to the live generic you see output material invisible so we are hiding the simulation results and instead of showing them we are writing the output material to an external render target here draw internal render target to external volume smoke number eight and the volume container the blue one is reading this uh, the same render target as an input and so uh, yeah let me just open this guy view alpha uh -huh. it looks ugly but if I start the simulation and I switch to the render target we might see how it is updated yep so it's like a grayscale information flowing here from the simulation container to the volumetric ray marcher. And that's how it works. <coughs> okay, uh, what up with candles? Uh, let me uh, switch off the pound possession and go there quickly. So that's the candle stage, uh, stage number seven. And mm, as you could see, each candle has its own simulation container. These two guys, B and C, are coming with the same preset. How come they are don't, not looking similar? Uh, yes, it's a key parameter. And it is called, and is located on the live generic, randomized noise offsets. Of course, all the things I'm explaining here also explain on the level placed texts. So, if you randomize noise offsets, your uh, smoke simulations are not going to look quite the same. But uh, we don't need to use different or separate simulations. This is only for the purpose of demonstration. In this case, only a single simulation is used and still as you could see I could walk around uh, we could render an arbitrary number of these candles now how is it done well in the case of these single containers let me just quickly go to the preset I open the preset and here uh, as you could see we are using a texture file as an input this is quite simple a big black background with a white dot and that is generating uh, the input for the candle smoke. Well, in this case we are using these red dots. If I select one of these objects and I go to the collision on the actor details panel you could see generate overlap is on and the type is set to word dynamic and in the same time ninja is set to detect word dynamic kind of objects. So this way uh, Ninja is reading the position of these red spheres as input for this simulation. So these are this is like using two different methods. Um, <clears throat> I would like to get back to these stages. Do you see these white 
balls here well these these white balls have been placed here because uh, <clears throat> we are using these as like fire anchor points uh, to define the emission points for the fire so in this case the the logs the pieces of wood are ignored and much the same way as we did with the candles we are setting the containers to interact with word dynamic type objects and we set these white balls to be word dynamic here and here so this way we could we could like manually configure how the fire would look like and this one the red ball is like a moving object so um, we could even have like dynamically changing uh, anchor points yeah it's the same setup here uh, except we don't have moving points but only uh, these static white balls yeah as, as I told you in this case uh, the simulations are embedded and so on and so on and finally let's just uh, move on to the character effect section which is um, stage 9 is it yep and a very important part muy importante um, this guy here has only one simulation container embedded and this guy two simulation containers embedded let's just compare uh, first I'm going to process this guy I'm, I'm getting a bit closer and please have a look at the flaming hands I'm getting a bit further away so it looks fine but as soon as I start to rotate around the character you could see uh, please focus on the the right hand side so as I rotate the character the flame disappears behind the body how is it possible since the right hand is of course <laughs> in front of this main part of the body well it's because and I'm visualizing the simulation plane generic and I pick this opaque material so the artifact is caused because the the camera facing plane is in the weight center in the middle of the body and of course it is when I I'm viewing the whole character from the side it is slicing the body to the half and this way uh, parts of the body are obstructing or covering the camera facing plane no good and so uh, well uh, in case we if we are viewing the whole character from a distance say we have like um, yeah we are like this far it doesn't really matter and it's a very efficient way to have only one simulation container but in case if we would like to have close-ups then we need this uh, multiple simulation container setup now have a look I'm just turning around the character and everything is on its place and looking fine and this is because we have two ninja live simulation containers and two trace meshes and each trace mesh is attached to the hands of the character and this way has no interference with the main uh, part of the body so that's the thing and here we have a link on how to set up uh, how to embed more than one ninja components to your character this video explains uh, here's another setup and this one uh, that's the default is with a torch it's just a simulation container and the trace mesh is attached to the tip of the torch and then I'm playing with variations the last one here on F sub stage is when we have been attaching a volumetric smoke container and pretty much the same way as we are forwarding simulation information to the volumetric smoke container here on this environmental stage uh, we do the same thing with the pawn so we are like uh, we are running this simple camera facing 2d simulation and we have been attaching a volumetric smoke container to the character and feeding the, the same information to the volume smoke container um, 
One thing worth to mention that the volumetric smoke container position is driven in the level blueprint. Nothing else is in the level blueprint, only this function which is moving the volumetric smoke container. So uh, that's uh, Ninja Live use case package number 10. Hope you're gonna like it and uh, see you next time. Thank you.